Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome back to People of Quran, where tonight will be the last night, inshallah ta'ala, where, where I will share with you a story of how one of our pious predecessors interacted with an ayah of the Quran. SubhanAllah, we're already at the end of Ramadan. May Allah accept it. And inshallah ta'ala, this is a beautiful story that we can take home with us, inshallah ta'ala, because becoming a person of Quran doesn't just mean that you take that surah or you take that ayah and, and you internalize it, but you know, you actually fall in love with the Qur'an and that's the goal here, that we actually get to a point where the Qur'an becomes part of us, to where we don't just live the Qur'an, you know, because we have to, but we live the Qur'an because we love the Qur'an and we love the one who taught the Qur'an. Uh, this is a story from the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that there is one of the Ansar that used to lead us and used to lead the other Ansar in Salah in Masjid Quba. Masjid Quba, for those of you that know the Quba Mosque in Medina, um, it's, it's very close to Masjid Nabawi, and it's Sunnah to go there, of course, and pray to Raka'ah. So this is a historic Masjid, uh, the Masjid that Allah refers to in the Quran that was built upon the foundation of Taqwa. So he said that this man used to lead Salah in Masjid Quba, and in every single Raka'ah, if Tataha, Yuqulhu Allah Ahad. He would start off after Surah Al-Fatiha with the recitation of Qul Huwa Allah Ahad. He'd read Surah Al-Ikhlas and then when he finished Surah Al-Ikhlas, he'd go and he'd read another Surah. So imagine SubhanAllah praying behind an Imam and literally every single rak'ah of Salah, he reads Al-Fatiha, Qul Huwa Allah Ahad and then he reads another Surah. So he would constantly do this until the Sahaba went to him and they said, listen, you know, uh, you can do one of two things. You know, either you, sh you could just read Qul Huwa Ahad by itself and consider it sufficient. That's good enough to just read Qul Huwa Ahad. Or you could read another surah and that's sufficient. Meaning you don't need to do this in every single rak'ah. Put Qul Huwa Ahad in every single rak'ah. So the man said, look, I'm never going to stop doing this. He said, this is a condition for me being your imam. This is how serious he takes it. Like if you don't want me to, le if, if you don't want me to do this, then I'm not going to lead you guys in salah anymore. Um, so you make that call, you make that decision. So Anas who says, but the Sahaba knew that he was the best amongst them. Meaning this wasn't just some average companion. Because a lot of times when this story is told, it's like some ignorant Bedouin. No, this is one of the best of the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Allahu alam who he is. But you know, they knew that he's the best one. So they didn't want him to stop being the Imam. So they went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about it. So the Prophet ﷺ said, you know, tell him to come to me. So the man came to him. And Rasulullah ﷺ said to him, you know, oh so and so, what stops you from doing what your companions ask you to do? You know, Qulu Allah Ahad is sufficient, another surah is sufficient. What stopped you from listening to them? And he replied to the Prophet ﷺ and he says, Inni uhibbuha. He said, look, I just love this surah. And the Prophet ﷺ saw the sincerity of this companion when he said, I just love Qulu Allah Ahad, right? And a lot of people would think that, you know, you could, you could make the argument that you'll read Qulu Allah Ahad in every rak'ah and not read another surah and you'll say, I just love the surah, right? <laughs> to just make all of your salahs really fast. But this man would read Qulu Allah Ahad and another surah. So he said, look, Ya Rasulullah, inni uhibbuha. I just love the surah. The Prophet ﷺ looked at him and seeing that sincerity, in the man's eyes and seeing the love that he had for that particular surah of the Qur'an, Surah Al-Ikhlas, one third of the Qur'an, the Prophet ﷺ says, Your love for that surah has guaranteed you entrance in the paradise. SubhanAllah. Not only is your action okay, but your love for the surah will enter you into Jannah. This guarantees you paradise. Now SubhanAllah, this leaves us with a question. This hadith, by the way, is in Al-Bukhari. Is it now sunnah to read Qul Allah Ahad in every single rak'ah? Is it halal? Is it mubah? Is it permissible to read Surah Al-Ikhlas you know, to read Surah Al -Ikhlas in every single rak'ah? Is it bid'ah? Is it an innovation? Right? And there's a technical point here that needs to be clarified. In the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu a sunnah becomes a sunnah through a statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, qawl, it could be an action of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fa'il, or it could be, you know, taqreer. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam approves something that someone else does. But within taqreer, within the Prophet ﷺ approving something that someone else did, there are two types of approval. One of them is where the Prophet ﷺ sees a companion doing something and the Prophet 
you know, praises that action, and so that becomes a sunnah. It actually becomes something that be, that becomes beloved to do. The other one is when the Prophet ﷺ is simply silent about the action of a companion. Meaning the Prophet ﷺ doesn't approve the action, he, he allows it to be done, but he doesn't assign a reward to it. When the Prophet ﷺ does that, it becomes permissible. So this falls in that category, where it became permissible for that man to do so, and for everyone else. But it's not necessarily a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to do so, because the Prophet ﷺ only approved of that man doing it, you know, because of his love for the surah, and not necessarily just the sunnah to read Surah Al-Ikhlas in every single rak'ah. But SubhanAllah, you know, what is it that you love about the Qur'an? What surah do you love in the Qur'an? You know, why did this man love Qul Allah Ahad? Why is it one third of the Qur'an? Why is this short surah that we just speed through, you know, all the time in our salah so important? And why should we pay attention to it? Because this is a surah that highlights the essence of Tawheed. I mean, it gives us monotheism in its purest form, and that's the beauty and the crux of this religion. And so subhanAllah, we find this companion loving it so much that the Prophet didn't just say, okay, you can read it. Instead, the Prophet said, if you love this surah, the way that you love that surah, then you're definitely going to be entered into Jannah because he loved that surah for Allah, and we love the Qur'an for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now subhanAllah, we're done with the series and I have to say you know I have to thank everyone that's tuned in um, to this series this has been one of by, by far you know one of the, my favorite series he's ever doing uh, in life subhanAllah I've really enjoyed it and I look forward to really doing this inshallah ta'ala annually I ask Allah that he accepts our Ramadan and that he gives us another year inshallah ta'ala and, and more but I ask Allah Allahumma balighna Ramadan oh Allah allow us to see Ramadan next year inshallah ta'ala so hopefully We'll continue in this and obviously, you know, the main thing we take from this is to become people of Qur'an. We ask Allah to make us from Ahlul Qur'an, those that the Prophet ﷺ said are the most favored people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of Qur'an, Ahlul Qur'an, they are the VIP of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the meantime, dear brothers and sisters, you know, from now until next Ramadan, obviously continue to refresh, his, you know, your, your, your memory and go through the series and share it with other people. And continue to tune in, inshallah ta'ala, to all of the great series that we have on Bayina TV uh, and, on you, on, and on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Bayina, where we'll be continuing, inshallah, the beginning and the end. And inshallah ta'ala, other episodes like Amazed by Quran by Ustad Nu'man are going to be coming up. So stay tuned, inshallah ta'ala. And thank you so much, Jazakumullah Khairan, for being a part of this Ramadan, for allowing me to be a part of your Ramadan. I look forward to seeing you guys, inshallah, in the future. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.